Hey, what's up guys? It's me David back with another video and this is my first build guide. This is a budget oriented um, video editing build and it's around $600. So um, yeah, I will get started right now. So for the CPU, which is the very brain of a computer, we're going with Team Red's Ryzen 5 1600, and the reason for that is on Team Blue, you cannot get an equivalent um, CPU um, that has 6 cores and is at a whopping 12 threads for a $200 price tag. It's just not possible. You will have to go with an i7 um, with one of the more heavy i7s to get something equivalent to this or a Xeon. So that's just out of our price tag right now. So out of the red team, you might be asking, why not the Ryzen 5 1500X? It's got higher clock speed, has four cores and eight threads. Well, in video editing, it's not the clock speed that matters the most, although that does matter, it's the core count that matters more because if you have more cores, you can do a lot more tasks at once and that's really important for video editing. So um, at $210, I would say this is a really nice chip. For the full specs, it's 64 bits, uses AM4, um, it's at 3.2 GHz base and then 3.6 GHz max turbo and it has 6 cores, L1 cache is 6 64 kilobytes and 6 32 kilobytes instruction and data L2 cache 6 512 kilobytes L3 cache 2 8 megabytes um, lithography it's 14 nanometers and it has a 65 watt thermal design which is pretty cool um, for this kind of spec. Um, the cooler that comes with the 1600 is good enough in my opinion. It keeps the CPU cool and since it's only at a um, what is it? 65 watt thermal design, it's not gonna get that hot anyways. And the more cores you have, it's far easier to dissipate heat. So, again, the higher core count is working for us in every single way, which is really awesome. Now, the MSI B350M Pro Micro ATX AM4 motherboard. Okay, there's not much going forward except for price. Some people may like the looks. I personally don't. It has some red LEDs. Um, so, it has one PCIe port. Um, and that's made of metal, so I guess that's a good point. It's B350, so it's not like overclockable or anything. Um, it has two RAM slots. Mm, not so good. That, so, um, that's the reason for the RAM. We're going with a single stick of 8GB DDR4 memory. And this Crucial Ballistic Sport LT. Um, the only reason I went for it is because it has a quite a decent heatsink on it. It looks pretty good, in my opinion at least. And it's 8GB, which I consider minimum for video editing. And it's a single stick, so you can upgrade later. And right now you're not going to break the bank, but when you have some spare cash later, you can get another stick of this. So, um, yeah, it's 8GB, 2400 megahertz. It's a pretty good stick, in my opinion, for $60. Now, as Linus Tech Tips once said, it's much better to get a SSHD over a um, hard drive and an SSD on budget-oriented builds like this. This is a 5-star SSHD from Seagate, a very reputable hard drive manufacturer, and this is their um, SSHD. <laughs> It's the Fire Cuda, so um, yeah, it's one terabyte, 7200 RPM for the normal hard drive, and then there's an SSD in there too. Now I didn't feel like we needed a decent graphics card, like we didn't need a GTX 1080 because we're not gaming. Now if you're using Premiere Pro like many of the um, video editors, 
you're going to be um, not really using all the power the GTX 1050 has. Not that it has a lot, but GTX 1050 is pretty darn decent. At $110, this guy is overclocked from the factory. So it's 1.4 gigahertz and turbo boosts up to 1.5 gigahertz. This has 75 watts, which is only 10 watts more than what our um, CPU would have. And so this is a really nice, um, decent card, you know. So it's not like breaking the bank, but it's a decent card. I, I, I think it's pretty darn good, especially if you're using something like DaVinci Resolve. You know, it's going to... DaVinci Resolve uses more graphics power, and of course, unless you're turning this into a Hackintosh, which I doubt you can, um, because Hackintoshes don't use AMD most of the time, you're not going to be using Final Cut, so that's not a big deal. Anyways, let's get on to the case. Now, this case is stunning. If I made a build for myself, sorry, my finger got shown. Um, if I made a build for myself, this is the case I would use. Stunning tempered glass. It's got not that much I.O. in the front, but it's good enough in my opinion. It's got a nice hexagon shape, um, things in the back. Um, overall, look at that tempered glass. Oh my god. Overall, it's a really nice case for $70. Now, with the power supply here... It is a 430 watt 80 plus, so it's certified. Um, it's not modular, but that doesn't really matter because it's only 30 bucks. Yeah, it's really cheap, and it's from a really sorry, it's from a really reputable power supply manufacturer, EVGA. So, yeah, and this all comes down to a price tag of 634 dot $29 and it consumes 225 watts um, I think this would be a great editing PC if I made it myself but unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to use this PC or make it because I have another PC that I'm gonna buy so um, this isn't unfortunate this is unfortunately not gonna be in use by me but I'm hoping this PC build will help you out a lot because for beginning YouTubers, it's really hard to get a decent PC and edit and stuff like me. You know, I only have 45 subscribers. Um, so, it's really hard to get a decent editing PC because YouTube isn't creating any revenue for you and all that. So, this is a really nice budget editing PC that I, I, would, be, I would be really happy to use, actually. Um, so, thank you guys for watching, and as always, stay tech